Alright, today on the channel, the latest cool toy that we're going to be taking a look at is the Super Console Cube X3. This is the newest variation of the Super Console Cube. Uh, I reviewed the previous predecessor, uh, the X2, if you will, and overall performed well. Uh, I do like the form factor, the aesthetic of it, the system itself, very small, compact, looks like a miniaturized Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, one key feature that I really enjoy on this cube is the flip up top here and you've got four USB ports. A lot of these emulation consoles uh, for four player configurations, you have to plug in USB dongles and have all sorts of crazy wires hanging off of them. And to me, that's just an absolute eyesore. So I like that we have four USB ports for your controllers right out of the gate. You can plug in USB controllers or you can connect to, to Bluetooth. Um, there's a lot of versatility with this. Around the back, your ports. So you have your AV there for your 3.5 millimeter audio. You've got a, you know, a fifth USB port here, uh, USB 3.0. You've got your SD card slot. This is what comes with all your preloaded games on this little micro SD card. Your HDMI out, your Ethernet port, and of course your power and your power button. So it's not always on. I like that there's actually a dedicated power on and off switch. On the bottom, you got little no slip rubber feet, and that is it. Inside the box, you get an Android remote because it also comes with the micro SD card loaded with the Android operating system. Uh, if you want to use the Android operating system, you just swap out the cards, power it up that way. Uh, but honestly, I don't think people are buying these for the Android side of things. You get your wall brick for your power. You get two knockoff PlayStation 2 style DualShock controllers. You got to put batteries in the back of them. There's wireless USB dongles you plug into the system and then you can have wireless controllers like that. Uh, I just tell people probably use your own controllers. Uh, you probably got a USB controller out there. It can be better suited than using these stock controllers, but they will serve in a pinch. You have their user manual. And then last but not least, you have an HDMI cable. So let's go ahead and power it up and see how the games list is. See how the emulation is on this new X3 upgraded chipset. All right, we've powered on our system, and as you can see, we're sitting here on the all games listed. Bottom left-hand corner, it says 107,000 games. Uh, to me, that's a huge red flag. To me, that always screams duplicate files and unnecessary things on here to bloat the number of games, because realistically, there's not going to be 107,000 games on here. So right out of the gate, that's a head scratcher, but let's go ahead and see how things are organized. So you can have an add favorites. There's nothing on there by default. You get your older systems, so Arcade Classics says 2,500 games. You got your Final Burn Alpha, which will also be arcade games, slowly but surely. I think it says over 6,000. Uh, it's hard to tell. The font down there by the joystick buttons is uh, poorly placed. Then you got subcategories. MAME, again, arcade games, 1,800. Uh, you got your different systems. Your Capcom 1, 2, and 3. Your Amiga, your older uh, computer-esque systems, Turbo Graphics, PC Engine, all your Nintendo games, Super Nintendo, even got the hack. Uh, a lot of these are absolutely atrocious, but every once in a while you'll find a couple of those hack file games that are um, worth your time. You got the Japanese and American catalog for Super Nintendo, and again, hacks. Virtual Boy, Nintendo 64, Game Boy Advance, Nintendo DS, Open Bore, Thomas Wave, Sega Dreamcast. I would imagine it's going to be on here. Sega CD, Sega Saturn. How many Sega Saturn games do we have? 24 games. So if you want to look into a catalog, you'll go ahead and select it. Brings up your various games. Shows a brief description. A little clip art image of the game. When it was released. That kind of information. So small Saturn category here. Dreamcast. How many Dreamcast games do we have? 23. Okay. Some decent, decent ones on here. Some of my favorite games for sure. Um, and you can always add ROMs to this. So you'd pop out the micro SD card, put it in your computer, add, remove files, however you want. Sega Naomi, 75 games, so that's good. So it looks like we kind of max out probably at the Sega Naomi, Atomus Wave, Dreamcast, and I would suspect PSP. Yep, PSP. So that's about the max performance you're gonna get on here. Uh, as far as options, you're gonna hit your start button. 
you got your standard options and if you don't care about me going over this you can go ahead and skip through in the video i'll put timestamps below but you got your user interface settings so you can change the theme uh, you got a couple on here you got their standard emulec and then you've got the crystal theme uh, you can also change things like your controller Bluetooth setting if you want to remap things, uh, pair Bluetooth controller. Your game settings, you can do this individually or globally. You can change your aspect ratio. So if you want all your games to be widescreen, 16 by 9, stretch them, or you want the standard 4-3 aspect ratio or whatever the aspect ratio is for the game, you can do that. You can do it game by game or you can do it globally. So make those changes across the board. Uh, you can turn off the bilinear filter, which I highly recommend. Um, the bezels, the little things that make uh, the dead space on a 4-3 aspect ratio on a 16 by 9, you can turn these on and off. Max performance. You can rewind, you can save games, you can load games. So no, nothing really to write home about. This is pretty standard stuff. It's been around for years. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, just check out some of the emulation performance and see if this X3 chip actually runs any better.
So at the end of the day, this is a good emulation console for your older systems, your home consoles, basically anything Dreamcast and below. For the newer systems, not really suited, but it does have a small form factor, which is great. Unfortunately, the biggest gripe I have with this is again, the file structure and the duplicate files. And there was obviously some testing issues or lack of testing issues, shall I say. So for example, we got Final Burn Alpha and you see loads of Killer Instinct files, which is great. You never see Killer Instinct on these systems. Well, there's a reason. Killer Instinct needs CHD files to run. And it also runs under MAME, definitely not Final Burn Alpha. So if I go ahead and select it here, you're gonna see that it's gonna give me some sort of error message which is understandable because it is not designed to run under this emulator. So whoever put these you know, ROMs together in these folders and everything, they didn't test this because there's loads and loads of Killer Instinct files and none of them are gonna run unless you put them under the appropriate folder with MAME, put the CHD files and that sort of thing. And I guarantee you nobody thought that through or even bothered to test that. So that is my biggest issue with this. Everything, you know, with the newer systems is hit or miss. So your PlayStation portable games, you will find some that play and you will find some that don't play. Nintendo 64 works great as long as you select the correct emulator. Unfortunately, the default emulator is typically not the one suited best for the games you're trying to play, so you have to go into the advanced game settings and change the emulator. But if you don't mind doing that sort of thing, then this is probably a good option for you. And that does it for this video review. If you enjoyed the content, make sure you hit that like button, share this video with your friends if you found the information helpful, and as always, thanks for watching, guys. It really means a lot.